So these are Big Larry beads, and today I'm going to show you how I make them on my lathe from solid brass bar stock. So what are Big Larry beads, you might ask? Well, they're a skill toy that you fling around your fingers and do tricks with. Um, now, I'm by no means an expert, I'm, I'm a complete beginner, but this is the general idea. So let's get started. I'm going to be using 19mm or 3 quarter inch bar stock for this, solid brass, and I'm going to start by chucking it up in the three jaw chuck. I'm starting out by facing the end of the stock just to make sure that it's uh, cleaned up and uh, running true with the rest of the work. Now there is a small divot in the end from uh, a previous job where I drilled through but I'm not going to bother removing all of that because uh, I'm going to be drilling through this in a moment anyway. Just engaging the power feed here to ensure that we get a nice consistent uh, finish all the way down the work. Using a finishing insert here that's designed especially for aluminium and brass which is giving pretty good results. Um, I'm turning the diameter down to 18 millimetres and I'm going about 30, 31 millimetres down the shaft um, in order to uh, give enough space for parting off once we've finished all the other turning operations. Managed to get the dimensions to within uh, about six microns here, so that's about two ten thousandths of an inch, so pretty close. And I'm just going to change over to the chamfer tool here so that I can break the edge on the end of the work and just make it a little nicer to handle. I'm swapping out the chamfer tool here for the round nose um, carbide turning tool um, to create the decorative bands on the bead. So what I'm doing here is I'm just touching off on the work and resetting the DRO so I can get a precise depth of cut. I'm cutting to about 0.8 of a mil. Um, previously to this, I'd touched off on the end of the work to get a, um, a reference for the distance between the bands uh, so that I can get a consistent look um, across the bead. Next, I'm gonna set up to drill a through hole um, all the way through the bead for the uh, string and also to drill a recess in the end of the bead to accommodate the knot. Just makes it look a bit neater. The first drill I'm using here is a center drill, which is a really short, stubby, and therefore stiff drill that uh, gives us a very accurate center in the work, which gives the next drill uh, a good chance of sort of staying on track and not wandering off and drilling an off center hole. Now I'm gonna swap out for the uh, 4.5mm drill. Uh, we're gonna use this to drill a through hole all the way through the bead uh, in order to accommodate the string. Um, it's a 4mm paracord, so a 4.5mm drill should give us a little bit of clearance and just make it easy to change strings. So we've got a nice engagement there with that um, center drill. Um, I should really be using a spotting drill for this, but I don't have one at the minute. Um, now I'm gonna be drilling through to a depth of about 28, 29 millimeters so that um, when we part this off from the parent stock, uh, we should have a nice clean through hole all the way from one end to the next. Swapping out the uh, drill here for a 9.5 millimeter drill in order to um, drill the recess in the bottom of the bead for the, uh, the string knot. Um, so we're gonna be drilling it out to about 10 millimeters, should give us enough uh, room to get the knot completely hidden away. Uh, just keeps things a lot neater, looks a lot better. And just coming in with the chamfer tool here just to break that edge, make it look a little bit nicer and make it nicer to handle. Final operation on this bead is to part it off from the parent stock. So I'm just touching off on the end of the work there with the uh, parting tool just to reset the DRO and get a, um, an accurate um, zero. And I'm moving in 31 millimeters. Uh, now with a three millimeter blade width, that'll give us a, a a length on the final part of 28 millimetres. Using the powered cross feed uh, function of the lathe here, uh, just keeps the tool engaged, keeps the keeps it cutting nicely, um, and seems to seems to do a good job. Uh, I'm lubricating the cuts here with uh, isopropyl alcohol, 
um, which seems to be doing a pretty good job of evacuating the chips. And it's um, and it it's much nicer to use than oil. Um, it's much cleaner. It just evaporates off and leaves you with a nice clean part and a nice clean lathe. As you can see here, the um, the parting tool leaves a bit of a rough finish on one surface and that little nub of metal. So we need to put it back in the lathe and face that end off. Now, because the part is brass and the jaws of the chuck are hardened steel, I don't want to mar up the surface of the brass. So I've just wrapped it in a little bit of aluminium drinks can there that I've cut to size. And uh, that seems to do a good job of, of holding the part without marking it. Um, so we're just coming in here and, um, and facing off the end and cleaning up that, that corner edge with the, with the chamfer tool and coming back in with the manual chamfer tool for the, uh, the centre hole. So that's one bead finished. I shall make another one off camera and then it's time for stringing. I'm using a string length here of 300 millimetres or about 12 inches. Uh, it's 550 paracord, which has got a breaking strain of several hundred kilos, so it's pretty strong stuff. And I'm just burning the ends there with a the lighter to stop it fraying. So here are the finished beads. Uh, these are the heavyweight beads that I make, 54 grams per bead, which is um, which does suit a heavier style of play. I do also make them in, uh, in other sizes and in other materials. Uh, I'll make them in aluminium, for instance. Um, if you're interested, I will put a link to my shop in the description. Thanks very much for watching.